Hey everybody and welcome to a very special wild ride. This week we have got an icon, a legend of comedy and marijuana culture. Plus, here's something you have never heard me say about the Wild Ride podcast. This episode has the craziest celebrity stories ever told by a guest. I mean, it is mind blowing. Like the stories that we are told, celebrity after celebrity after celebrity in the craziest situations. I mean, dude, Perhaps the most entertaining podcast we've ever recorded. So you're in for a treat. Ladies and gentlemen, Tommy Chong. Yeah, dude. Thank you. Thank you. Please, no no applause. Just sit down. <laughs> dude, what an honor, man. And I want you to meet my co-host, Scott Randolph. How's it going, Tommy? Hey, uh, Scott. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Also, up at the front of the van, we've got uh, the gorgeous Paul Brisky. Hey, what's up, Tommy? How are you? Hey, Paul, I don't see you, but I imagine you're gorgeous. Oh, Thank he, you. he sounds great, too. I'm working on sounding better myself. I've been taking vocal coaches to try to make my oh, voice... Oh, good for you. Yeah, make my voice sound a little more healthy. I don't know if I'm much... Can you try problem. it out right now? I, I am trying. <laughs> you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, man, um, we've, we've met before, Tommy. Um, you were doing a podcast for a bit there. and uh, Oh, yeah. Our mutual friend Eli was the one who set it up. Right. I haven't heard from Eli. Is he still alive? Yeah. Who knows, man? Who knows? He might be. He, he might be back on the skids. <laughs> uh, we, we actually spoke to Eli. He said that uh, we love Eli. Yeah, we love Eli, and uh, he he gave us all kinds of inside information about you. He said ask oh. you. He said to ask you about uh, meeting Muhammad Ali, John Lennon. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I met Muhammad Ali. When was that? Oh, it was during the when he was uh doing speech, you know, when he was uh barred from boxing and he was uh just doing talks, you know. He was uh tripping around and yeah, yeah, it was very funny. I got a a friend a dancer friend of mine, uh, uh Scarlett was her name. I, I played one time, played in a little circus, and she was one of the dancers. And so we were, we were friends, and she, and so I told her I was going to uh, Detroit. Yeah, I was on my way to Detroit. I was this was in San Francisco, and so she told me, "Oh, she says, oh, you won't, you'll not, won't believe who I who I was with with, who I was hanging with last night." And I said, "Who?" She goes, "Muhammad Ali." I said, oh, great. How was it? She goes, yeah, it, was, it was Muhammad Ali. He's the champ <laughs> of the world. <laughs> yeah. So then, uh, so then I get to Detroit, and Bobby Taylor calls me on the phone. And he goes, hey, you want to meet the champ? Said, what? He said, yeah, Muhammad Ali. He's coming over. He's coming over. So come on by. So, so I got my car, and I drove and parked, got in the elevator, and there's Muhammad Ali in the elevator. And he doesn't know me, and, you know, and, and so we're riding up to the to the Bobby Taylor uh, floor, and, and uh, Muhammad Ali, you know, he's not even looking at me, you know, kind of lo looking over me, you know. <laughs> Did that. And, and so I said, uh, uh, Scarlett says to say hi. <laughs> 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 there just a hit me and him in the elevator and his eyes got all big and he looked at me like I was, you know, some magic happened, you know, <laughs> because uh, what are the odds of being in an elevator with some guy that knew about your little affair that you're trying to keep quiet from the world? <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> and they, the next thing you know, you're in the elevator, and the guy goes, "Hey, Scarlett says hi." Well, he just just stared at me, just stared at me. And then we get off the elevator, and we're going to the same room, place, because he's going to meet Bobby Taylor. Him and Bobby were friends uh, during the Olympics, and so so then Bobby introduced us, you know, and Muhammad Ali. He, he then he started loosening up. He was very happy then. It was very funny. And I took pictures with him, but you know, no one no one knows where the pictures are now. They're 
he disappeared. Mm. Did you guys share a marijuana cigarette? <clears throat> no, no, no. Bobby wasn't smoking. No, no one was really smoking back then. Just me, you know, I'm right. by myself, you know. You know, it was highly, well, you know, imagine he's on, you know, he's barred from boxing. And he didn't want to have to deal with a, a drug rap, too, you know. Right. And was he, he was barred from boxing for, like, not joining the Vietnam War or something like that? Yeah, or what was yeah, that? yeah, 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 yeah. He, uh, he wouldn't, he wouldn't, uh, you know, he wouldn't do the draft thing. And, and he encouraged a lot of people to burn their draft cards. Cheech was one of them. Cheech saw Muhammad Ali and then he burned his draft card and then he went up to Canada. So yeah, we got a little, little in-house, uh, connection there, you know, that's cool. But, is that how you ended up meeting Cheech is that he burned his draft card and then went to Canada and then you met him? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He was up in All because of Muhammad Ali. <laughs> <laughs> All because yeah. of the girl, yeah. Scarlett, yeah. dude. Right? Yeah. So Scarlett. Well, Scarlett. Scarlett. She's still. She's still cool. She's. A, she's. She's a buddy of mine. You know. What about the time? <clears throat> what about the time you met Michael Jackson? Michael Jackson. Well, Michael. I'm. We met Michael in in uh, Chicago at the Regal Theater. Uh, oh. Him and his band had won a, a contest at the high school. And the winner got to uh, open for uh, Bobby Taylor in the Vancouver's mm. and uh, Jerry Butler. It was a double bill or a triple bill with uh, the Jackson Five, mm. and that was the first time we saw him. And oh man, it was like seeing it was incredible. Here's this little guy. He's the littlest guy you ever saw. And he's he's acting like a, a seasoned performer, you know. He's doing all the dance steps. He, he was a big Jackie Wilson uh, fan, so Michael was doing all the steps. And then they sang, uh, 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 <laughs> "My Girl," you know, the Temptations, mm -hmm. and oh, they were incredible. And so, and we shared a dressing room. And so there we are. And Michael used to get a little. Uh, coca-cola case you know turn it upside down and, and stand on it and stand in the mirror and, 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 and you know comb out his uh his little little natural you know he's in there <laughs> he was a he was a cool guy and bobby uh you know bobby taylor uh, was yeah we had a hit record and you know that's why we were on motown and uh Bobby, uh, that's the kind of guy, you know, hey, come on, uh, come on with, to Detroit. That's what he told the Jackson Five and Joe. Come on, Detroit, you stay at my place, and I'll, you know, we'll, we'll get you into Motown. We'll, we'll, we'll get with Motown. Wow. And they did. Yeah, they did. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we knew Michael before anybody, before Barry Gordy, before anybody. Wow. And, wow, uh, that's cool. You're like Forrest and Gump. When, uh, your life like <laughs> weaves through all yeah, this, all well, this history. I am totally, totally. I, all my all my whole life has been been like that. You know, I've been uh, I've been uh, doing that. Um, yeah, meeting people. Yeah, it's very serendipity. You know, mm -hmm. meeting people, people before they're famous. Did you Did you meet Prince before he was famous too? I. No, he was famous when I, I I didn't meet him, talk to him, but I was at a at a club with him one time. He's he's a funny guy, Prince. <laughs> he, was, yeah, he was he was the shortest guy I'd ever saw him with heels. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. You know, I I I uh, met Prince one time. Uh, I was with the I was with this girl, you know, she was my girlfriend, and uh, I and I. I I used to routinely perform tricks for people when I met them, you know, if I really wanted to impress them. So I said, oh, let me show you this great trick. I'm going to balance this drink on my head, and then I'm going to drink it without using my hands. And, and I lay down on the ground and pick, the, pick up the drink off my head with my knees and put it down, pick it up with my teeth. And he turns to my girlfriend, and he says, 
does this impress you? Like in the most like in the most condescending, like frankly dickheaded way. Wow. And I was like, man, Prince is a dick, right? So then fat, fast forward all these years, right? Fast fast forward all these years. We're on tour. And I'm promoting my show in a radio station. And uh, the radio DJ just says, he says, Oh, so you ever made a celebrity that was a real dick to you? And I'm like, Yeah, Prince was a totally a dick. And I walk out of the the the, the fucking radio station and we go to the supermarket and then the, we find out Prince just died. Oh, <laughs> like oh, like I was talking <laughs> shit about him like like the day he died. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's not good. <laughs> I know, but but hey man, what, what, I wasn't like out to get anybody. I was just telling a story. That's funny. <laughs> that's, he, he was kind of like the Chappelle character where he's just like, uh, you know. <laughs> Pass the ball, Charlie Murphy. You know, just kind of. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure it's fine. Plus, you can't make everybody happy. If anybody knows that, it's me. I'm sure Tommy knows that. Can't. Yeah, you ever yeah. piss anybody off, Tommy? <laughs> Every uh, celebrities, me? Yeah. <laughs> Tommy Chong is going to blow you away with the story he's about to tell, and I might just be about to save you from pissing someone off by sharing an incredible deal from Manscaped. Because let me tell you, when a lady goes down and finds a big nasty bush in your nether regions, she gets pissed off an awful lot of the time. But that doesn't need to happen when you have Manscaped's Lawn Mower 3.0. This is the most highly advanced men's uh, pube trimmer of all time. Okay? It's got Technology that reduces any grooming accidents by a whole hell of a lot. And lucky for me, it's time for me to harvest some pubes. Because as you might have heard, I am saving up for a special world record stunt. But that's neither here nor there. What you need to do is make sure that you are groomed and ready for the ladies. So you're going to go to manscaped.com slash Stevo. And that's going to get you 20% off your order plus free shipping. And that counts for all customers in America, Canada, Australia, and the UK. How about that? So once again, for 20% off your order and free shipping to all of those countries, go to manscaped.com slash Stevo. Yeah, dude. Ah, uh, yeah, I got nailed real early with uh, by Jack Nicholson. <laughs> <clears throat> I was, uh, I was, <laughs> I was at this party in, in Hollywood and, uh, uh, Lou Adler. We we had just signed with Lou Adler. In fact, I think we had a record out then. Yeah, we did. And uh, so, yeah, so Cheech and I were the the new kids on the block. You know, we we're the new the latest thing. And we went to a party uh, at Lou Adler's, and there was uh, everybody. The Stones were there, and half the Beatles were there, and all these famous people. Jack Nicholson. Wow. And so. I wanted to get uh, smoke a joint, so I asked Lou, you know, where can I smoke it? He's oh, I'll go in the bedroom. So I go in the bedroom, and there's, <laughs> I look down, and you know, I light up the joint, and I look down, and there's John Lennon sitting on the floor <laughs> by the bed. Wow. And I look, I, wow, John Lennon, he goes, hey. And so I immediately offered him the joint. He goes, oh no, no, I can't smoke. Uh, I got immigration problems, you know. And so just then the, the door opens and here, in come Rod Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> and he's over there and, and he's combing his hair in the mirror, you know. So I offered Rod a, a toke and he said, no, 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 you know, my voice, I can't do that. And so then I, and anyway, it smelled really rank, you know. One of those <laughs> so I put it out and then I walked out into the hallway <clears throat> and run into Jack Nicholson. And wow. And I just saw him in a movie, The Last Detail. And in the movie, he plays like a, a major or something anyway. But there was one scene that fascinated me. I, I couldn't get over it. it, where he's in the mirror and he's combing his hair. And the, 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 the scene went on for a long time. And he's got no hair. He's got a little military cut. and But he, he kept combing it throughout the whole scene. And it was it was mesmerizing, you know. So I asked Jack, 
you know, I didn't say I'm a big fan or nothing. I said, Jack, that scene, you know, in the in the last detail, man, you're combing your hair, you know, and <laughs> you're combing your hair and it's taking forever and and you got no hair to comb and, and you're still combing it, you know. And I says, Was that ad lib, did you make that up on the spot or was that in the script? And he said he just looked at me like I just dump put a dump on his shoe, you know. <laughs> 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 and, he, and he walked by me. Excuse me, you're in my way. Just oh, shit. pushed me aside and just just walked away. It was it was a big. It 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 was. <laughs> <laughs> it stopped me from talking like I knew these people, you know. <laughs> Jesus, man, dude, dude I, I uh, ha- have a thing with with uh, meeting celebrities. At least I used to, where I would develop like what I call Tourette syndrome. I would just say something to a celebrity that was just the worst thing. Like I, I remember meeting Mark Wahlberg. I went up to him and I said, "I said, hey, man." Uh, I was at the the, the the screening for your for your movie Rockstar. I was like, man, that movie sucks. <laughs> he <laughs> like, said that. I did. I said, I said, who thought that was a good idea, even on paper? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and I, I was all wasted. And uh, and he said it was actually a very well written script. And I said, yeah, about the douchebag that ruined that ruined Judas Priest. <laughs> Holy fuck! <laughs> so yeah, dude. So I don't well, know. Well, that's the way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, seriously, because now he's got respect for you. Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's true. You, yeah, can't, you, you don't want to be too nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I met um, uh, uh, Dave Matthews. So I, said, I said, oh, Dave Matthews, dude. Man, sometimes uh, I'm in the van with all, with all the guys, and I got my iPod on shuffle. And then you pop up, and it's so embarrassing for me, man. <laughs> but dude, I love your music. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh man. So now, John Tommy, um, the uh, like s- smoking marijuana. You're kind of branded to marijuana. I see you're wearing a Tommy Chong's cannabis. Uh, you know, top right there. He's the Maharishi of marijuana. Yeah, right? Because, I mean, if you think, uh, you know, nowadays, people who are prolific, who are known for, for being potheads, like Snoop Dogg, Willie Nelson. I mean, guess mm-hmm. Willie Nelson goes back a ways. Uh, Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen, yeah. But my, my question is, was there anybody with a, a public profile, like a real, like, you know, celebrity status, who openly identified as a marijuana smoker in the media before you? A couple, a couple. Um, trying to think of his name. He's an actor. Uh, see, helps up potheads. <laughs> Maybe Jack. <laughs> I Kerouac. can't think of his name. It, it'll it'll come. His name will come. Steve was, McQueen. Uh, uh, Great star, uh, yeah. Steve, Steve was uh, definitely a pothead, more more of a motorcycle. Remember, he, he used to ride around with Bruce Lee and smoke joints with Bruce Lee. I read it in his biography; it was pretty interesting. The uh, Bruce Lee, the the fighter. Yeah, the yeah. He there was a part in Steve McQueen's doc, uh, book where he said that him and him and Bruce Lee used to drive around the Hollywood Hills in their convertible and smoke weed together. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There was. There was a lot of celebs. Yeah, there was there was a few. Oh, what's his name? It's an actor. He, he got a year in jail for a joint, for one joint. Wow. And he had, he got a year in jail. He was. Uh, oh come on, what's his name? Very famous guy. Very How kind of a sexy. I think what we're the, what, the answer we're getting is no, dude. <laughs> no, nobody. Yeah, anybody that uh, other than me. <laughs> yeah, nobody uh, other than you. Uh, you know, you know, I got turned on by jazz musicians. You know, and, and like, um, you know, back in the day, you know that the reefer, uh, Louis Armstrong was was a big pothead. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Louis, Louis, back in you know during Nixon time, <clears throat> and, and Nixon was a big Louis Armstrong fan. And so one time Louis was on this world tour, and so Nixon sent Air Force One to pick him up. You know, to, to bring him home, and and so Louis, wherever he, 
he would go, he would collect weed, you know, because you couldn't get the good weed, like, you know, the kind that you, you can get over, like, in India and Africa and that. So, so Louis uh, had a big satchel of, of this good weed from, uh, I guess it's from India, somewhere. And, and he, he had, a, had it with him, and he carried it with him wherever he was. And Air Force One, so he didn't have to worry about immigration, you know. <laughs> so, so, so uh, Nixon gets on the on the on the on the on the plane and uh, meets Louis, and, and so Louis gets to get off the plane, and, and he's got his bag, and, and and Nixon goes, "Here, I'll carry that for you." <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's so fantastic! And, and Louis goes, "Okay, props." <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool unbelievable yeah. now uh, uh, when you say nixon era good weed how would that exact weed that you're talking about stack up against the shit that they have today the what the, the shit that they have today the, the, the weed the weed it doesn't even compare it'd the be weed. like dirt or just like yeah, the weed that they had, like weed got, marijuana got, like considerably more powerful over the years. You think? I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I now did. it's like a hundred percent. Well, you right, know. well, right. So, so I mean, well, how, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it, it's all a chemistry. You know. Right. You can get, so you can get. Uh, I mean, we had the same weed. Weed hasn't changed. You know, the plant's the same as it's been uh, in the beginning as it is now. You know, there's no there's no difference. What? what, what, what so you're telling me that a, you smoked real kind, sunlight? bud? <laughs> What's that? You, you, uh, you're you telling me that you smoked real dank kind, bud, way back in the 70s. The best. Wow. The best. Hmm. From Thailand, Thai stick, they call it, or, from, or the hash. See, hash. See that's what they that's what the civilized people did back in India and in, in those places. They would take the the best of the best weed, the pollen, mm-hmm. and then they would condense it down, and then they call them temple balls. And the reason they call it temple balls is that when they harvested the weed for the hat, <laughs> they didn't cut the plants down. They waited, let the plants mature on the vine, and then they would go through there, and the pollen would just stick to their leather. Or, or their naked bodies, and then they would come back into this room and scrape off the pollen off their bodies, wow. and that's wow. what they would make hash out of. And the the most delicate of the the best of the best would go to the top of the temple, of the of the room, and that was for the temple, and and so they would scrape off that the hash and make balls out of that, and th- those were temple balls. And now, now oh, when you right. have that, you have a tiny, tiny little bit. It'll put you away for a week if, if you're not careful. Put you away six <laughs> no, to twelve months. No, you know, it's a big fallacy. You know, I mean, I think I think uh, high times and the cannabis cup. They started a lot of these rumors, you know, because they would say, "Oh, my weed's stronger. It's got x, x percent more uh, THC and all that." But yeah. Same as the Mexican weed. Only difference with the Mexican weed is that they never cleaned it and they never separated it. So you had seeds and <clears throat> stems and seeds, and then they'd put a, a sugar or dirt or something to make it heavier so they could sell it. You know, so they make the weight. Yeah. And and so so a lot of times you're smoking stems, seeds, weeds. You know, but yeah. the but the actual plant itself has not changed in in. in uh, thousands of you know it can yeah. you know, it's a it's like a, i mean you can grow bigger apples right but the apples that they grew back in the day even though they were smaller they were juicier and more more nutritious you right. know than the the phony ones they got now so the weed uh you know people like to think you know they got oh they, we got this this dank or this uh chronic this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. forget it man wow man that's the, great the, the, was... the, st- the sticking joint i was in since it was in sensimia but it was uh it was mexican and since to me it just means without seeds that mm. that's all and and the, the stuff we used to smoke had seeds in fact it was a ritual where you clean the weed on an album cover and and, and you collect, collect the seeds 
One yeah. time I, I, I had my uh, house in, in Bel Air remodeled and I used hippie labor. And so the hippies, when they were there, they smoked a, a couple of pounds of weed and they cleaned it and they left the seeds at my house and so the my uh, house the guy that was looking after my house he's uh, italian from I- italy uh he found the seeds and so i had an area in my yard that went up the hill and it had a natural spring and so he planted all the seeds up there <laughs> i had a i had he had over 40 plants up there in bel air and they grew to be 15 feet tall and the best, oh, the juiciest bud. And the neighborhood, <laughs> the neighborhood kids got a get wind of it, you know. And so this one kid used to sneak in the yard and and and, uh, and steal the some of the bud. And so Frank, uh, is like I say, he was from Italy. Frank, he, he saw that that was happening, so he stayed up there one night with his gun. He had a gun, <laughs> a handgun. And the kid comes and steals the weed, and he's trying to make it away. And Frank got him from behind. He says, "Hey, you, you must stop. You stop it. You drop it that bag, or I'm gonna shoot you in the ass." <laughs> <laughs> if anybody knows about getting shot in the ass, it's me. And you know what else I know? Just about everything about my body, my health, and my fitness. Why? Because I wear a whoop band. What is it? It's only the most sophisticated fitness tracking device out there. It works with a subscription and an app which tells you everything there is to know. Like for example, sleep. Last night I was in bed, resting from 12.05 a.m. to 8.32 a.m. Now that sounds like I got eight and a half hours of sleep, but thanks to my Whoop app, I know that I actually slept for seven hours and 11 minutes. I know precisely how many disturbances I had. I know that uh, my REM sleep, wow, I got an hour and 52 minutes of REM sleep. Perhaps that's why my recovery is so high today, meaning that I'm ready for some serious strain. And when I get ready for strain, that might mean that I jump on my new bicycle. And you know what happens when I get on my new bicycle? This automatically tells me, congratulations, you went for a bicycle ride. It knows everything. It knows everything about my heart rate variability, about my calories burned. I mean, I'm telling you, I love it. And I never take it off because I never have to. The battery just slides right on there to charge it. Oh, you've got to try it. You'd be crazy if you didn't. And if you love this podcast, you will. You'll go to whoop.com. That's W-H-O-O-P.com. Use the promo code Steve-O and you get 15% off at checkout. So support the podcast, get healthy, and know everything that's going on with your body by going to whoop.com, using the promo code Stevo, and enjoying 15% off at checkout. Now let's talk about shooting people in the ass. When you tell a guy where you're going to shoot him, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how you know. <laughs> that's, that's when it gets serious. The guy kid dropped the bag and he ran. And so the next day, Frank told me about that. And so I said, you know, this is dangerous. You know, I don't want anybody getting killed over my weed. And so I went down to the, and Frank told me where the kid came from. And, so, and as I walked up to the house, there's this loud rock and roll music playing, you know. When I knocked on the door, the music stopped. <laughs> and then the dad came to the door. And I says, uh, he said, yeah, can I help you? I said, yeah. I said, listen, tell your kid to stay out of my yard. Don't be, don't be, stealing weed you know <laughs> stealing my plants he said what, are, what 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 plants are these is he stealing i said uh, marijuana he said isn't that illegal and i said yeah <laughs> i said that's another reason why he should stay away from my <laughs> my, my plants and, and the father goes i'll tell him <laughs> Wow, that's, that's great. And that was the end of that. Yeah. Hey, Tommy, I, sorry to cut you off. No, go for it, man. But I'm curious. So after you know Cheech and Chong blow up in the '70s and '80s, and and and, and you're killing it. And how do you? Tra- I mean, are you getting stopped at every airport? You know, because people think that you have weed on you at all times. Or was there kind of like a method to traveling? At times, at times, yeah. You know, and now it's okay. But yeah, before. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. But what I would do, you know, I always just carry a little personal stuff, you know, a couple of joints, uh, if that. But I always had it in my guitar case. And I'd put my guitar on my back. And, and, and so the, the weed would be above my head. And so when the dogs came, they'd sniff around. They'd, they'd find nothing. But one day, I forgot I had a pipe in my pocket. Mm. And so I was coming into Canada, and, and the dog, boom, hit the pipe, sat down. And so the narcs come over, and they, okay, you got any weed? And blah, blah, yeah, oh, yeah. And so I told them. And so, and so they took the weed, and they searched my stuff, and then they left. And they came back with my passport and everything, and they said, okay, you can go. <clears throat> and I says, uh, what's up? He says, well... Uh, you're, you're born in Canada, so we can't keep you out of Canada. And you're a United States uh, citizen, so you can't. They can't keep you out of the states either. <laughs> and, and so I said, "Oh, you mean I can smuggle weed anytime?" <laughs> <I want?" laughs> and they said, and the guy goes, "Oh, don't do that." <laughs> but 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 now no now it's okay. Yeah, we got stopped. The last time we got stopped. <laughs> We, you know, everything's legal, and we're in uh, Detroit, and it's legal medically, you know, and so we're coming home, and my son was with me, Paris, and he had a big uh, knapsack, and there's a big jar of these great buds, and he had it in his knapsack, you know? and then we're going through the X-ray, and of course the big jar shows up, and and the TSA guy goes, uh, whose bag is this? And my son, you know, it's mine. He says, uh, stand over there, <laughs> and so. They brought out the bag, opened it, saying it's weed. And so my son, right away, he said, oh, that's my dad. Says, that, that weed to my dad. He's, 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 he's old and he's got cancer. And it's his medicine. And because oh, that's it's great. a medical thing. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, we, we had a biggest laugh because going in, it was his weed. <laughs> but when he got caught, all of a sudden it's mine. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it happens every time. Yeah. So but be- the cops, the cops, they, they came, they waited for the cop to come, and the cops said, ah, let him go. And they said, well, what about the weed? He said, give it to him. Yeah, let him go. And so we told them we were going to, uh, we had a medical uh, card. You know, I never had one, but we got one real easy, and then we sent it to the cop, and that's it. But now, now I have no, but I don't, I don't, I don't ever, first of all, we haven't been flying for forever, and, and I never... No, no sense in carrying it anywhere now because it's everywhere you go there's weed you know there's no problem unless you go to the eastern hemisphere you got a problem going through singapore and you know like uh india you know like a lot of places it's tough to get indonesia weed. yeah indonesia I'll, t- I'll tell you a trick i'll tell you a trick you go through those eastern uh, places wear the hat of the country that you're going to go or leave <laughs> Okay. Be that tourist. You know the tourist where you, with the, you got yeah. the cowboy hat on or the or the Vietnamese hat on. I I found out accidentally because I, I collect hats, you know. So I had this hat on, and as soon as they saw the hat, they they point at it and they smile. You know, I'm one of those. You know. Yeah. So you so you connect. The worst thing you can do is be that that bored American. You know. Right. You, you know that shitty American, but you want to. Put on the put on the garb, you know, wherever you go, just whatever you know the tourist thing that they sell, because when you when you do that, you send a message that that you're one of those goofs that buy that shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that you're and, supporting. And that's what they like. You should try that in Singapore, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, well, I was I was going into uh, uh, Japan. Uh, this was a few years ago. And, uh, you know, they're very strict, super strict. And yeah. you don't lie to them, and blah, sure. blah, blah, blah. And so I'm coming in. I got a, a, a rap sheet because I got busted for bongs. And so I, I had to put it on there. Have you ever been arrested or busted for drugs? And I put yes. But I was with my wife, who was very gorgeous and very well uh, dressed. And I was wearing a, a, my Rolex at the time. And I was well dressed, and uh, so they come in. So the immigration, you know, they lead me in, and they he t- took one look at me and my wife, and he says, "Okay, you go in. You you lie. You lie." <laughs> wow. 
He told you, you to lie. lie. Yeah, he said you lie, and then when you come back, you lie again. You, you lie. <laughs> no, no, no drug, no conviction, nothing. You go. You go. That's yeah. great. Yeah, because they they want the tourists. You know, you know they right. don't want no you know long haired hippie. You know that's gonna take money from them. <laughs> right. They, they want tourists that are gonna dump money there. You know. Right. So I think too that it's, it's it's all it's all how you dress. Mm, you know? Perception. Yeah. 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 What yeah. What's your take on uh, them decriminalizing drugs in Oregon? They just decrim- all drugs. All drugs. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense because you fill up the you know a lot of junkies, especially in Vancouver. In Vancouver, you know, I mean, jail is a, a place to get a, a meal and a and a you know and a warm place to sleep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and so they don't mind being busted. <laughs> You know, I mean, they're junkie. They're sick people. Yeah. You know, just like be busting people that have the uh, the virus. Well, you got the virus. Okay, lock them up. You know, it's it's a sickness, and and, and it's worse than the virus because it's an addiction, a sickness. You know? mm-hmm. Anytime you see a guy laying in the gutter with a needle sticking in his arm, you know that Fuck. it's not his the choice of lifestyle. Right. You know? it's, it's something he has to do. You know, I know I grew up in Vancouver, man. It's more, I can't, I can think of more people I, on one hand that, that made it through without dying of, uh, of an overdose because it's insidious, yeah. you know, yeah. heroin. I had a chance. Uh, I start. I started hanging with uh, Lenny Bruce's uh, uh, crew mm-hmm. after Lenny died. Mm. Uh, yeah, there was a crew, his mom included, uh, Sally Marr and Tony Viscara. Tony was his, his uh, Lenny Bruce's father-in-law, but Tony was also the guy that, that got him the drugs. You know, that was his job. Mm. And so one day I asked Tony, because we became good friends when he saw Cheech and Chong. So I asked Tony, I said, what's, what's the big deal? Because he was a heroin addict. I said, what's, what's the big attraction to heroin? And he didn't say a word. He just reached in his pocket and handed me a, a packet of heroin. Try it for yourself. Yeah. I put that packet and hid it in my sock drawer, you know, in my in my clothes but in my closet. And then a month later I went and got it out and flushed it down the toilet. I did Good. not want it. I don't want I don't want to know. Yeah. Sure. I, I, I don't want to know. There's for there's sure. no upside. Right. Yeah, that could have been the changing point of your life, you know? Yeah. Could have been, yeah. I, mean, I gotta say, Tommy, but I, but, I, but I learned. See, I got addicted. The, the trick is to get addicted to the right things. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I got addicted. I got addicted to bodybuilding. You know, all right. That's, yeah, that was that's my. I'm still addicted to it. You know, and and that's that's a perfect thing because it gives you the same high as you get from everything else. You know, uh, because all it is really is is your your you're working your body. In, in, in such a manner that you have to have endorphins mm-hmm. inside your body, you see. And it's the endorphins that gives you the high. So that's what the runner's high. That's a runner's high. It's endorphins. Mm-hmm. If you want the same kind of thrill, stand on a, like a, a five-story building on the edge and look over. <laughs> and yeah. all of a sudden, your body just, boom, gets filled up with endorphins because it's anticipating you jumping off and landing. And, and so the body will protect you with an, with these pain killing uh, natural mm. drugs, you see, and and that's what real heroin is. That's what heroin just takes away feeling, you know, it deadens the nerves, and so you get this euphoric feeling. The trouble is when it wears off, then all of a sudden, oh, gee. <clears throat> you know. Like when you ever had a, your arm asleep and then all of a sudden the blood comes back in and oh, everything's sore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, no, the best addiction to me is, is like make it healthy. Make it healthy, you know. I'm interested to know what your opinion is about whether marijuana is an addictive thing. To some people. Yeah. That's a good answer. Yeah, to some people. To some people, yeah, of course. It would be. It's that feeling. Yeah. I, I, I'm addicted, but I'm not physically addicted. Right. You know, like I can take it or leave it, you know. 
Right. It doesn't matter to me. Right. You don't get physical uh, withdrawals without it. Well, I mean, no. But there's like an last, habitual addiction. Yeah. Last night was weird for me. I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing now. You know, I'm, I, I'm doing my fan mail. And, and all of a sudden I, I felt this like I was high on something. And I, I, you know, sometimes I don't remember, you know, especially <laughs> with the virus, with the virus, you know, every once in a while I go, oh, wow, am I getting that virus? And then I realize, oh, no, I smoked out. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's you know, like, and so, so last night I said, oh, I, I, I couldn't walk. I was sort of falling over, you know, and because I, I practice a tango walk, that's, that's my exercise. It was a special way to do a tango walk. And, uh, excuse me. <laughs> and so, uh, bless you. So I couldn't figure out, you know, I had lost my balance and I, and I know I didn't get high. And I couldn't figure out what it was. So I said, well, I better get high. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll know. And so I smoked up and I got too high. And when I get too high, it, it's Betty by his time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so I went to bed, went to bed, had a nice sleep, woke up fine. Everything's fine. But it's, uh, yeah, you know, being a bodybuilder, I, I learned a lot about diet and about my body. And uh, it, it's, it's cool. You know, what, what, what I really used it for now is the spiritual side. Mm -hmm. I've been uh, smoking and meditating. <clears throat> well, not so much meditating, thinking. Yeah, thinking. In fact, in fact, I haven't meditated for a long time. <clears throat> you know, because uh, I, I found out something. You know that you don't have to. All you have to do is it's your mind. See, marijuana can really affects the mind and the way it does it puts you in the moment you know and that's why whatever you're doing in the moment it's enhanced like if you're in an art gallery for instance all of a sudden you're you're, you're seeing art that you've never seen before oh shit <laughs> it's i wish you quit i wish you'd quit phoning me <laughs> do i have a oh, oh i have another uh I, I got another uh, thing to do at three. What time is it now? Five. Uh, Two yeah, fifty-five. Let, let's uh, yeah, let, let's let you go, man. But I want to tell you, Tommy, man. I don't think we've spoken to anybody on this show who has told us more captivating and just fucking awesome stories, man. <laughs> I've never seen Steve so quiet on the Wild Ride podcast. Dude, this I mean, is great, <laughs> dude. It, it was uh, really, really special. Is there anything that we can help you promote? Right now, like, uh, uh, you know, the usual uh, CBD, you know, the, the line of CBD products that I got, so, on, you know, they're, they're doing really well. There are right. a lot of, a lot of stores and they, 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 they help, they help, uh, help people. That's what I like to do. You know, I, I like to help people, but the, the, the thing is about marijuana, it, it keeps you on me anyway, uh, boils things down to the essence you know people the thing is about meditation uh, it's good if that's what, what you do you know but just like in, in the christian bible says you know that you don't have to make uh, repeat these things over and over and over again you know uh as if you know the christian bible they, they kind of talk bad about repeating repeating uh mantras you know uh yum yo ho ringe kyo yum yo ho yeah. ringe kyo nam yo <clears throat> you know okay yeah. all all that really does is stop it, it's it stops your your mind from going other places you know it keeps right. it keeps your mind a bone but, to chew on <laughs> but all you have to do this is what i tell everybody is change your thought you can't have two thoughts in your head at the same time you think you can, but you can't. So whenever trouble or anything arises, think of God. That's the most powerful thought you could have. And, and that's it. Don't, don't think of what 
you need or what you want because cool. God, God will be, uh, uh, you know, all you have to do is think of God. And, and people said to me, you know, when I did the movie, It's God, they, they said, did you talk to God today? I said, no, I never talked to God. I only listen. Mm. All right. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, I got to go, man. Dude, what a treat. Thank you so much, Tommy. You're the best. You're the best, Tommy. Okay, brother. Peace, yeah. man. Yeah. Did I tell you or did I tell you? That was the craziest experience, man, hearing those stories from that icon, that legend, Tommy Chong. Man, I just am beside myself with how much I enjoyed that one. And the whole rest of the day, I just told luck, man, we had a great time talking to Tommy Chong. So you know what? Please get on the Instagram and post something tagging Tommy Chong, letting him know how much you enjoyed it. And why don't you head over to Amazon and, and put in Steve-O's hot sauce for your butthole? Because I think we're actually doing pretty good on there. I saw something we were ranked the number 30 top hot sauce on all of Amazon. Oh man, let's see if you can help me climb up that ladder. Right, go get yourself some Stevo's hot sauce for your butthole on Amazon. And thank you for sticking around, man. I really do appreciate you. Yeah, dude.